Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Each Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. It's like Jesus going to the temple. He's like, I gotta whip it! <laughs> Get out! Get, Get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy. Holy sh too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't believe it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It's you pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been a soup when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm late. I'm very late today. So this is going to be a pretty short stream, but I did want to come on and read the writ of pro prohibition that was uh, filed in the Jeremy Hales case this morning at 5.55 a.m. You remember that uh, they had a deadline of 6 a.m. to get this thing filed or the hearing was going to go forward today and the judge wasn't gonna step off the case and all that. But the appeal was turned in and it was turned in on time. And uh, so I would, now at, coming up at three o'clock, uh, Larry, DUI guy is gonna be doing a reading of this and it's gonna be much more thorough than what I am doing right now. So make sure you tune in for that too. And I will redirect you guys over there uh, when we get there. Hey, hey, Larry, Larry's in the chat. Thanks for the super chat, Larry. Uh, Larry says, get it, Megan. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm giving a speed reading. So if you want, if you guys want to go and see the, uh, you know, real deep analysis and the lawyerly take on it, you need to go over and check out DUI guy after this at three o'clock. And he's going to be giving you uh, all the inside lawyerly stuff. I give you the journalist point of view, uh, the medium smart point of view. <laughs> and medium smart is good enough. But I really am running behind. I still haven't done my podcast, Fox Den Daily, for the day. And I was busy editing a video of all the greatest parts of our hearing watch on the January 23rd hearing watch for What the Hales. And I did put it up on the, on the, on the channel today. So make sure that you check that out when you get a chance, because it's funny. I, I edited all the parts together where the judge was cutting off um, <laughs> the Hales' lawyer and all the beeps that I was putting in and everything else. Like I edited it all in all the stuff he said about Mark Feather. God, it was so funny. All right. Is the chat moving too fast? 
Uh, make sure you guys make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe. If the chat is moving too fast, I can I'll slow it down a little bit. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn on subscribers too. I better I better do that. Hold, please. I'm a one woman show here. I can't do two things at once. There we go. Subscribers are on and slow mode. Uh, 30 seconds. Is that good? All right. There we go. <laughs> All right. Hit that like button. Make sure that you hit like for the algorithm. And then we're going to get into it. Okay, let's go. Let's go, go, go. Because I still, I got to get through this and then I got to get my podcast recorded. I haven't even planned it really yet. Uh, all right. I can't, where's Brad? I love Brad, but I can't have any guests today because guests make me go a lot slower. Uh, so it's just going to be me today. Is that okay? Are you, can you handle it? All right. 655 this morning, it went in the writ petition for writ of prohibition. So basically this is to prohibit the judge from take, from deciding this case, and it's going to go to a higher court. Pursuant to the Florida rule, petitioner Jeremy B. Hales petitions the first district court of appeals for a writ of prohibition, prohibiting, I love the sentence, prohibiting the honorable, not so sure, Craig C. DeThomasis, circuit court judge of the 8th Judicial S Circuit, Levy County, Florida, from presiding over further proceedings in case number, all these numbers. This petition follows Judge DeThomas's orders denying Hale's second and third motions to disqualify for bias rendered February 14th and February 28th. Yeah, buckle up is right, Judge. Buckle up. Basis for invoking jurisdiction. Petitioner invokes this court's jurisdiction under Article 5 of the Florida Constitution. Prohibition is the proper remedy to test the vi validity of an order denying a motion to disqualify a judge. Cabada v. Costello. This court has jurisdiction to review the denial of a motion to disqualify a judge for bias pursuant to Section 38.10 Florida Statute, Bundy v. Rudd, Barnett v. Barnett, and P Padavano, Florida something practice. Okay. Statement of the case and facts. This is where it's going to get interesting. <laughs> and no Norway says medium smart is still 112% smarter than Judge DeThomas says hashtag buckle up. That's funny. <sighs> you guys crack me up. How is the chat doing today? Uh, let's see. And by the way, hi Rumble. We we are live on Rumble too, Rumble and YouTube. Pepper NC, thanks for the super chat. Says Megan, have seen have you seen Trump dancing on Soul Train from 1976? It's hilarious. No, I haven't. It, is that real? Wheelie Life, thanks for the super chat. Says, can the judge say it was not turned in on time, even though it was by five minutes? Who knows? He can say whatever he wants. That guy clearly can do whatever he wants. Tobin T, thanks for the super chat. Love your channel. Found you via Hales, DUI guy. You, so glad everyone is helping fight for our freedoms through this story. Me too. Me too. All right. The merits ultimately involve the intersection of First Amendment's rights to free speech and Florida's cyber stalking statute. Hales and his fiance operate a popular YouTube channel program called What the Hales. It is a video journal of their lives with much interest generated in their treasure hunting experiences, as well as their promotional events that involve extensive charitable giving. They have a national and international viewership of approximately 700,000 people. So impressive. They also have a stalker fan who moved across the street from him in a tiny town, population about 100 people in Florida. Yeah, that sucks. This petition for writ of prohibition arises from the trial court's denial of three motions filed by Jeremy Hales to disqualify Circuit Judge Craig Thomas de Thomas's for bias. On February 28, 2024, the judge entered a three-page single-spaced order denying Hales' third sworn... I love it how they keep saying <laughs> single-spaced. Uh, denying Hales' third sworn motion to disqualify. On February 14, 2024, the judge entered a five-page single-spaced order. Again, single-spaced. 
denying Hale's a second sworn motion to disqualify because the judge's 214 order denying Hale's second motion to disqualify was wordy, excessive, and ran afoul. <laughs> afoul. Is that is that like an inside joke about the feathers? <laughs> about Mark Feather? It ran afoul. <laughs> it's a different kind of foul. Of Rule 2.33, the order of 214 became the basis for Hale's third disqualification motion. Hale's first motion to disqualify Judge DeThomasis was filed December 21st. I need some WD-40 on this thing. It's squeaky. I hate it that my microphone arm squeaks. Hale's first motion to disqualify Judge DeThomasis was filed December 21st, 2023. As a result of Judge DeThomasis' excessive participation... <laughs> Excessive participation. What is my problem? <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. Look, look fat. Look, here's the deal. Look, look fat. He's got excessive participation. <laughs> <He's> got... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is cracking me up. As a result of Judge DeThomas' excessive participation at hearing on November 29th, in which he inter alia <laughs> conducted the direct exam of the petitioner in the lower tribunal, Preston. Oh my God. So it's saying that he was litig he was being her lawyer. The judge entered an order denying the first disqualification motion on December 26, 2023. Documentary evidence in this record is included in the appendix, and references thereto are denoted as A, the electronic recordings of the hearings from the 8th Ju Judicial Circuit, including January 23rd, will be submitted by supplemental record. Quotations taken from the recordings include timestamps indicating the brackets, in brackets, the number of minutes and seconds into the proceeding. Transcripts have been ordered and typed, blah, blah. All right. Do we need to read the nature of the relief? We, uh, the nature of the re relief should be to get a different judge. <laughs> Additionally, Hales requests issuance of an order to show cause so that a stay of trial proceedings may be effectuated pending disposition on the merits. Okay. If I were to, I think that that means, actually, I don't know what that means. You go ask Larry what that means at three o'clock. He'll tell you. <laughs> so that it, I'm, I'm thinking that it means Oh, right, because they asked the George to the George. They asked the judge to stay the proceeding so that they could find they could get their appeal heard and on the merits of that. But he said no. The final hearing that was set for March 1st has been continued with the date to be determined. Good cause exists for this court to issue show cause order because of the intolerable adversarial atmosphere Judge DeThomasis has engendered as set forth in the petition for the writ of prohibition. Uh, allegations in a motion to disqualify, so this is the standard of review, allegations in a motion to disqualify are reviewed de novo as to legal sufficiency. The standard for viewing the legal sufficiency of a motion to disqualify is whether the facts alleged, which must be assumed to be true, this was a big sticking point, would cause the movement to have a well-founded fear that he or she will not receive a fair trial at the hands of the judge. Deprivation of procedural due process claim is reviewed de novo. Argument. Judge DeThomasus's lengthy, self-indulgent orders denying motions to disqualify are themselves independent bases for disqualification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you are a corrupt person. You're the most corrupt person. When a trial court looks beyond the legal sufficiency of a motion to disqualify for bias and attempts to refute the allegations, like he did, it exceeds the proper scope of inquiry and disqualification is required on that basis alone. Regardless of the correctness of the denial of the motion is legally insufficient. Our dis the court noted, our disqualification rule which limits the trial judge to a bare determination of legal sufficiency was expressly designed to prevent what occurred in this case, the creation of an intolerable adversarial atmosphere between the trial judge and the litigant. What are you? An idiot sandwich. <laughs> 
Judge Thomas's, however, seems to believe in 2024 that a trial court may comment on the status of the record. When denying a motion to disqualify for bias. That, however, has never been the law in first DCA where the Levy County Courthouse lies. Oh, that's interesting. So ju the judge seems to believe that a trial court may comment on the status of the record when denying a motion to qualify. But that has never been the law in the first DCA where the Levy County Courthouse lies. Nonetheless, paragraph four of the judge's 228 order denying Hale's third disqualification motion states, in this court's prior order issued February 14th under subsection 7, the court explained the relevant and material status of the record, not by taking issue with the vermins containing the motion under review, but rather by identifying that it was true that there were several transgressions from applicable law and procedure engaged in by counsel throughout the proceedings, which were then addressed by the court as they arose. In other words, I ripped those attorneys new assholes because I hate them. Shoot, I was supposed to not swear till we got to 25 minutes. See, I can't do this. I'm no good at this. I'm no good at the YouTube censorship. I'm just not. With paragraph four of his order of 228, Judge DeThomasis is effectively telling us, including this court, that Judge DeThomasis doesn't have to follow the rules. Well, why is that? Because you are a corrupt person. You're the most corrupt. Yeah. Rule 2.3 is the operative and controlling rule for disqualification matters. It says no other reason for denial shall be stated. Paragraph 7a through f of Judge Thomas's 214 air order denying disqualification in this case, however, says this. It is true that on January 23rd, this court did make oral pronouncements that were adverse to positions being advanced by the respondent through his counsel regarding the posture of the case and the intervening developments, some contrary to law that again precipitated another request for the continuance. And these included, but were not limited to the following on the record proceedings. On 11 23 in response to the court inquiring whether he, the respondent, would be available to reconvene the following date at 9 a.m. to complete the hearing, co-counsel for the respondent, Mark Feather, represented to the court the following. No, Your Honor. Oh, we missed a footnote, but I'll go back to it. No, Your Honor, Mr. Hales is having to address matters in Ohio court related to the situation. He has to be tomorrow morning based on such representation, the court continued the matter, which at the time did not have any temporary injunctive relief in place to reconvene on 12-6. All right, the footnote here says, if any motion is legally insufficient, an order denying the motion shall immediately be entered. No other reason for denial shall be stated. Shall is a big word here. Shall means you have to. And an order of denial shall not take issue with the motion. <laughs> Hashtag Mark Feathered. <laughs> during the B, during the proceedings held on 12-6, the court learned from co-counsel Randall Shuckett and the respondent himself on the record that the respondent did not actually need to appear in Ohio court on 11-30-23 and that he only needed to sign documents two days later with his Ohio attorney as a direct result. It is true, as alleged in the motion under review, that the court did admonish counsel for lack of candor towards this tribunal, and such behavior was again addressed on 123 as the court considered the totality of the circumstances in the case when deliberating on additional motions being adjudicated. <sighs> my God, his sentence structure. Hashtag feather strong. Oh, my God. I'm dying. I'm dying. See further, despite the clear dictates of the Florida Supreme Court in Administrative Order AOSC1122, holy crap, cried Wolf. Wow, a hundred dollar super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, you're a bro. Love you, man. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. You just made my day. Nancy McCain, thanks for the super sticker. You made my day too, dear. And Debbie Childers, thanks for the super chat. Good afternoon. Love you. Mean it. Hang in there. I love you too. Thanks for the memes. Hot Rod 43, thanks for the super chat for public safety. He is a YouTuber. I was wondering if you could look into it. He's going through a lot. Maybe you could spread the word to help him out. Who? Who are we talking about? Jeremy? 
I think that's what we're doing here. Tommy Heron, thanks for the super chat, says, love a lady who supports baseball, but we need to see you in some Brewers Blue. Keep up the great work, great videos. So glad you and Larry are helping the Hales in this tough time. Well, somebody has to do it. Charlie, thanks for the super chat to help with the YouTube denying advertisements on this video due to Megan's accidental potty mouth in the first few minutes of the stream. Thank you. I often need some people to come in and, and help me, help me help myself, help me, help me. <laughs> oh God, we're still not done quoting this judge further. Despite the clear dictates of the Florida Supreme Court in administrative order and the Eighth Judicial Circuit administrative order, there was undisputed evidence that confirmed attorney for the respondent, Mark Feather, Mark Feather despite having previously signed an attestation that he was aware of the admonition regarding the prohibition of dissemination of unredacted copies of court proceedings, did disseminate an unredacted copy of 11 23 court proceedings as he was the only person to have requested an unredacted copy and his client. The respondent did then broadcast. I can't get through, the, through this in one breath. Cannot do it. Cannot do it. Oh, thank you, DUI guy. Says, for public safety is the channel name. Apparently another YouTuber who has some issues, not up to speed yet. Oh, well, maybe we'll have to look into that one next. Man, these sentences are long. This is all one sentence, you guys. I was trying to get through it in one breath, but I couldn't do it. Did disseminate an unredacted copy of the 1129-23 court proceedings as he was the only person to have requested an unredacted copy. And his client, the respondent, did then broadcast the unredacted copy on his social media platform. <gasps> It is true, as alleged in the motion under review, that the council was admonished on 12324 for such behavior as it was contrary to the dictates of the Florida Supreme Court and the chief judge of the Eighth Judicial Circuit, the Florida Supreme Court issued on July 20, 2011, said order attached on incorporated revised standards of operations. And don't, whatever you do, don't listen to this on high speed later. Because that will be crazy. <laughs> Said order attached and incorporated revised standards of operation and best practices in part to standardize court operations while continuing to protect from inappropriate release any confidential information that may be captured on electronic recordings. <sighs> the Florida Supreme Court further directed each judicial circuit to codify protocols for producing copies of audio video recordings. Further, section whatever states the following copies of audio video recordings may be made available to attorneys of record parties to a case and self-represented litigants upon request so long as acknowledgement is provided with a copy that states confidential information may be contained on the recording. Further dissemination of confidential information contained in the recording is prohibited. And a violation of the prohibition against dissemination may subject the requester to an action for contempt of court. My God, did they put the whole thing in here? Did they copy his entire order? I'm not going to read this again. I read it yesterday. So we all remember what was in this order, right? Yeah, we remember this. We're not going to read the I'm going to go back to the prohibition because my God, I can't. I can't read it. It's so wordy and so insane. I can't do it anymore. So going back to now, this is the Hales writ. So to be clear, in paragraph 7a through f of the order, Judge Detonisus criticizes Hales' attorneys, mostly feather, for violating administrative rules of court. We need like a sound effect for feather. Let's see. Do we have one? Do I have a feather, a something for feather? Let's see. My superpower is being honest. I no, this one won't work. I will. <laughs> I'll do it. I will eat your ass. <laughs> Get the fucking chainsaws ready. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the one for Feather. <laughs> let's try let's try Ricada and chainsaws out with Feather and see how that sounds. So to be clear, in paragraph 7A through F of the order, Judge Tatomasis is Tatomasis criticizes Hale's attorneys, mostly Feather. Get the fucking chainsaws! Ready. For violating administrative rules of court. Yeah, that works. I like that one. But the fact that Judge DeTonis has included that information on administrative rule violations in his order denying a disqualification motion, which is not to give any other reason for the denial, would suggest that Judge DeTonis himself violated an administrative rule in the course of trying to humiliate someone for violating an administrative rule. <gasps> oh my God. 
This is brilliant. I'm going to read that again because that's really good. But the fact that a ju that Judge de Thomas has included that information on administrative rule violations in his order denying a disqualification motion, which is not to give any other reason for the denial, would suggest that Judge de Thomas has himself violated an administrative rule in the course of trying to humiliate someone for violating an administrative rule. <laughs> That's funny. Although I would like to know what is the administrative rule that he believed Feather was violating? Oh, oh, right. Never mind. I remember now. On a final note here, Judge DeThomas's order of 228 also states, one, Florida Rules of General Practice and Judicial Administration 2.330H sets forth the requirement in reviewing a motion to disqualify as follows. If any motion is legally insufficient, an order denying the motion shall immediately be entered. Subsection C sets forth the requirements of a proper motion. And Rule.2 dot three three sorry rule two dot three three zero from the book if any motion is legally insufficient an order denying the motion shall immediately be entered no other reason for denial shall be stated and an order of denial shall not take issue with the motion the judge's order doesn't quote the last two sentences of the rule which ironically are the very sentences that prohibit Judge DeThomasis from writing these reductive multi-page single-space novella orders. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Emotional damage. Oh my God. <laughs> More of this, please, uh, Mr. Shockett and Miss Inkless. More of this. <laughs> please continue to write your motions to entertain the masses because that's what is happening right now. <laughs> that prohibit Judge DeThomasis from writing these reductive, multi page, single space novella orders. <laughs> Oh, man, is that good? It's too many words. Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. And <laughs> you got to cut back on the words, Judge. It's just too many. <laughs> In Douglas v. Douglas, this court explained the difference between considering a motion to disqualify under Section 38.02. Consanguinity. That's a big word consanguinity what does that mean all right I, i'm a nerd i have to look it up i've never heard that word consanguinity guinity guinity consanguinity the fact of being descended from the same ancestor the marriage was annulled on grounds of consanguinity oh no <laughs> sounds like a kentucky problem don't blame me for that that's a tug joke <laughs> No offense to anyone who lives in Kentucky. <laughs> Consanguinity, financial interest, etc. And on a motion to disqualify under Section 38, bias or prejudice, under Section 38, a judge is allowed to pass on the truth of those allegations, which makes sense because the facts for disqualification under 3802 are purely objective, readily verifiable, and have nothing to do with people's sensibilities. Traveling under Section 38.10 FS, on the other hand, means the litigant is claiming her presiding judge is biased or prejudiced against her. That scenario necessarily brings in feelings and one state of mind. Oh, I love that they're talking about this. I was wondering if they would address this because how does the judge get to say what somebody else's state of mind is? Like, we're talking about Jeremy's state of mind. We're talking about the attorney's state of mind. We are not talking about the judge's state of mind. And who, who is he? Is he like a seer? Does he have his, like, like fortune teller hat on where he's like, I know what you're feeling and you're not feeling afraid of me? How does he know? How would he know? Um, 
it should be enough that if a litigant in your court says, I'm scared that you're going to, that you hate me and that you're biased against me, it should be enough and you should step off the case. If I, if I were a judge and, and, a, and someone filed a motion that said that about me, I would absolutely step off the case because I would not want there to be the appearance that I could not be unbiased in that case. Good Lord. By the way, chat, thanks for being here. Locals, if you're trying to meme me, I don't have locals open because I don't have enough screens. I got all these screens and it's still not enough. All right. Maybe I'll move the locals chat to the right side of the page. Maybe that'll help. Wait, wait, no, not that, that one. All right. Hold on. Let me open the locals chat. Cause I bet you guys are trying to flag me down with memes. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Why are we having, why are we using, why do we have Lizzie Borden memes? <laughs> oh Lord. What am I looking? I'm sorry. I have to get caught up. Hold please. I have to get caught up on locals. Meganfox.locals.com. Oh my God. This is the funniest thing ever. I, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now, but I have to show it to you because someone put this meme in my chat this morning and I just about died laughing. Look at this meme. <laughs> you know, I can't deal with this. I'm going to nuke America. <laughs> oh, look, look, oh Hunter, even back then he was a little rascal. Oh, Hunter, I'm sorry. I just can't, I just can't, uh, I, I, I had to share. All right, moving on. Let's get back over to the, uh, who, whoever did that is a freaking genius. All right, here we go. Where's Archie? I don't have his camera set up today and I don't have time to do it either. Because I got to get out of here fast so that I can do my, um, I got to do the podcast. I'm look, it's, I can't miss a day. I promised myself I would do this every day for 10 days and not 10 days for two months. And I can't miss a day or then I'm failing. So I don't have time today. I have no time for the ruckus cam. All right, let's see. We're in a hurry today, folks. This is a speed read. This is a speed reading stream. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. 3,000 of you are here. I'm happy to see you. Thanks for being here. All right. Traveling under Section 38, on the other hand, means the litigant is claiming her presenting judge is biased or prejudicial, pre prejudiced against her. That scenario necessarily brings feelings in one state of mind. The litigant's state of mind in this context, the fear of being tried by a tribunal that is not impartial, must necessarily be paramount in order to protect the fundamental due process rights of those who come before the court. I like the way this is written. It is irrelevant whether the judge agrees with the facts on which the fear is based. It is the reasonableness of the party's belief, not the court's perception of its ability to act fairly, that matters. Mm -hmm. See also Super Kids Bargain Store, Inc. v. Breakstone. The proper consideration is not whether a lawyer would question a judge's impartiality, but whether an ordinary litigant would reasonably question the judge's impartiality. Hale's second disqualification motion was based on Judge de Thomas's conduct and comments at a non-evidentiary live hearing on 123 that we watched. Essentially, for 90 minutes, the judge bar barraged and or cross-examined attorney Shockett, the only attorney present on Hale's behalf that day, with hostile, accusatory, and degrading remarks that were actually directed to all three of Hale's attorneys for various perceived transgressions past, present, discussed infra. The judge's numerous disapproving comments about Hales's earning income from his YouTube channel also exacerbated his fear of not getting a fair trial before Judge DeThomasis. And to prove that is the case, to prove the truth of those statements, let me show you the evidence. Boy, am I glad that I spent all that time this morning editing. Because guess what I put together? I put together the, I put together the, um, evidence that this is happening, that he is doing this, berating the uh, lawyers, interrupting them constantly, 
Um, and complaining about YouTube all the time. Let me bring up the video that I did today. It's called Judge Judge Busted for Bias. Let's uh, share this. I'm going to show you a little excerpt of exactly what this petition is saying. They should have included. They should include my video in their writ. Right. Against me in wait, where is Jeremy? It? What was the first? I went to fear that this judge was not going to give you a fair hearing. Well, I went into the actual court hearing and uh, we were together. I went into the court here. Here, actually, Florida it's up here. Well, by good faith and credit under the law. And he says, nope. And, here we go. And you're also going to notice oh. that Judge DeThomasis interrupts Randy Shockett, my representation. Oh, yeah. Every he single time he opens time his mouth. And never, ever interrupts his buddy, Joshua Silverman. He gave you a Facebook post. And we also showed you some emails where... Before in their appearance, you're arguing, you're arguing the merits of the motion. They got it. Because there we you didn't go. get our, our required discovery. Well, the record reflects the response. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's number two. All testimony of any witness. Okay. That's a great point. I want to just touch on that. Hang on. Hang on. That's the second oh, motion. Number three. Um, proceeding. Well, that was in conjunction with a motion for discovery violations of not showing up for their depositions. I hear you. Yeah. I, I know why. I've got okay. institutional knowledge of why. But every case, every lawyer, I took the case just like Mr. Just like Mr. Silverman. We take the case as we see it. And I got short notice and I said, I'm going to ask, you know, I'm not prepared. And I appreciated your honor doing that. But this, I'm just pointing out here you, that you this is a continuance. What, I, has did, what to I did as a matter of this judge, we, we have to have discovery and it didn't, it didn't finish. Mr. Right, let's, let's put it in this context. Okay. Let's put it about context. Your co-counsel, current co-counsels to this day, <laughs> properly noticed as a video depot does not comply with the rule. Well, um, let's, fo let's follow the rules. That's why I'm asking the question because there's already. The oh, oh, wait, where's my beep? I, I lost my zero. button. There is. There. And so the notice that was filed. <laughs> YouTube complaining. You know what kills me is this judge acting like you posting things to the internet is just the worst thing he's ever heard. And now I hear that this deposition has been posted to YouTube. Like what? So what? About what then ends up being disseminated and published on your client's YouTube channel. <laughs> and so that's another consequence of there being additional time. <laughs> Jeremy's now face. I'm hearing this morning that a deposition has been provided on YouTube. And let me just ask the question: Is it a, is it a video? No. Well, it is a video. <laughs> to assure that your client, who testified or has made it clear to this court that his his I don't know if it's his main source of income, but his source of income is monetizing YouTube videos. That's what's what does that have to do with anything underlying this entire case? And you hand it to his source of income. Yeah, so <laughs> there's the proof right there of exactly what's being said in the writ of prohibition. And uh, there's there's another hilarious compilation of all the Mark Feather <laughs> obsession that you really need to see. So make sure you go and watch that later because um, it's it's really good. All right, hold on. Where? Why am I not in the screen anymore? All right, we're going back to the calm down chat. We are going to read the order. Now, just stop. You calm down. Patience. Patience. Good Lord. I was just showing you the evidence of what the order says. Oh, my God. By the way, can I just say to all of you who are new to my channel, because there are a lot of you, some of you have already rage quit. And I just want to say that I'm very, I, I always look forward to the first round of rage quitters after a spike in subscribers. Only the strong will remain. This is not, this is not a safety zone. This is not a safe place. It's not a place where you will never be offended. You won't ever get angry and you won't, you know, feel like your fifis got hurt somehow. <laughs> We don't do adult coloring books and bubbles here. So if that's something that you need, you, you must look somewhere else because it's just not here, okay? But I do always look forward to the first batch of rage quitters. I've gotten a few and a lot of them are upset with me for my ADD. But 
it is what, oh, I just realized I didn't take my pill. Damn. So the stream is going to be worse than usual. Sorry. <laughs> but listen, it's a, it's a real condition and I have it and you're just going to have to put up with me or go somewhere else. Someone yesterday actually made a, a complaint that they were not interested in my dog's butt. <laughs> Who's not interested in my dog? He's absolutely adorable. Just saying. But calm down, folks. We are on, we're on my timeline here, okay? <laughs> and if you do not like it, there will be plenty of other streams for you to go and check out. DUI guy is going to be reading it at three. I think this is what he's reading. I'm actually not sure. He's reading something at three. But, you know, you're welcome. If you don't like what you see here, if you don't like what we're doing here, if it bothers you in any way, if my intro is too long, if you don't like the sound of my voice, if there is something bothering you, you may absolutely leave at any time. You may go somewhere else. And I won't be offended. I literally won't. I believe in freedom and liberty and the liberty to pick a different channel and change the channel. What I don't believe in is canceling people, silencing their First Amendment. If you don't like something I say, you have every right not to like it and be offended and give me the finger on the way out. It's fine. But just go, you know, just go. It's fine. And then do your squats. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The judge's numerous disapproving comments about Hales's earning income from his YouTube, YouTube channel also exacerbated his fear of not getting a fair trial before Judge DeThomasis. Yeah, I mean, if a judge tells you he doesn't think your, your living is legitimate, well, then, yeah, he hates you already. That's exactly what he's, what he's saying. From the audio video recording, we can hear and see the judge's tone and demeanor. There is a discernible difference between the calm, attentive way in which the judge treated Preston's new attorney and didn't interrupt him when he spoke versus the condescending, fault-finding, aggressive manner replete with interruptions by the judge when dealing with Hale's counsel, which we just watched. When it comes to a party's fear of not receiving an impartial hearing, there is no applicable difference between statements directed at a party or his counsel, Lawman v. Racetrack Petroleum bringing out the case law. Judge DeThomas's orders are not in conformity with Rule 2.330. Um, oh my God, so many super chats just came in. Hold on. Uh, Electric Genius, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Or super sticker. Alan Beaulieu said, you and DUI guy enlighten us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. S.A. The judge's voice after inhaling helium. <laughs> Me reading really fast. Hot Rod 43, thanks for the super chat. The name of his YouTube is First Public Safety. He really needs help. If you go on his page, please help him. Oh no, coffee's coming back. Too much coffee. Brad Clements, thanks for the super chat. Stuck a feather in his robe and called it macaroni. <laughs> Cap Cap, thanks for the super chat. Reductive multi page single space. Hashtag reduct reductive multi-page single space novella orders. You guys, you have to get that trending. You have to. You you have to get that trending. <laughs> Shane Cook, welcome to the Fox Den. Nice to have you here. Paige Woodard, welcome to the Fox Den. Nice to have you here. Uh, Debbie Childers, check your email. Great meme to Thomas. To Thomasus is a jerk. Okay, I will. Shane Cook, thanks for the super chat. I wonder how many YouTube channels are now covering this case. Well, it's growing every day. Helen Gall, thanks for the super chat, says, love it. I got to stay because it's so funny and I love it. I'm glad you're having fun. Teresa Finn, thanks for the super chat, says, Megan, it's scary how alike we are. So very scary. Well, the ones who stay in the chat, the ones who actually stay here and become lifetime subscribers, yeah, they all get me because they're like me. Mimi, two boys, you do, you do you. Love you just the way you are. I don't have a choice. I have to do me. I don't have any other choice. I, I can't be anybody else. Jessica Kruger, thanks for the super chat. I've already been offended. I'm sticking around for the fun drinking games and there will be more. Patricia Brown, you are a riot. I'm here to stay forever. I'm so happy that you people who want to stay forever. Joel Bel Belgard, thanks for the super chat. Love your channel. 
Andrew Ogley, thanks to the super chat. Think most of us newbies love you. That's good. I'm so glad. I love you guys too. Chaos coordinator, member for four months. Thank you very much. Keep going, Megan. Hashtag fluck haters. Yeah. <laughs> Feather those haters. All right, let's keep going. My God, this is funny. Hales timely filed his second motion to disqualify the judge for bias on February 11th, 2024. Three days later, Judge DeThomasis denied the motion in a five-page, single-space, 2,549-word order that took issue with the allegations in the second disqualification motion and denigrated Hale's attorney even further, including veiled threats to report all three to the Florida Bar. The embellished order of 214.24, embellished, became an independent basis for Hales' third disqualification motion, which was filed and served one week after entry of two. 214 order. C. Manuel v. State of, uh, Estate of Manuel. When a judge has looked beyond the mere legal sufficiency of a suggestion of prejudice and attempt to refute the charges of partiality, he has then exceeded the proper scope of his inquiry and on that basis alone established grounds for his disqualification. I mean, you guys, if this is established case law, I don't see how he gets, how he survives the appeal. I really don't. Any of my lawyers in the chat um, at like MG Law, do you think that this could possibly survive an appeal based on that? I mean, if that's established case law, he's he's done. Uh oh, I had a phone notification. Oh crap! Oh no, it was school. Hold on, hold please. I have to call her back.
you impose fatness on you. You did it by going, oh, I want the butter and the popcorn. Oh, I want the butter on the ice cream. Oh, I want the butter on the sandwich. Oh, I want the butter on the salad. Stop eating butter. Can you just get up? Walk one mile. Do squat! Walk farther. And if you can't walk, crawl, roll, get dragged by a goddamn forklift. Whatever is wrong with you, just move ever, ever. Get off the chair, get off the couch. No one is coming to service you while you sink into that furniture, while you become one with the pleather your poor ass got on that Walmart couch. Can you try not floating into sadness? Stop eating, stop drinking, start walking, start doing anything that you haven't been doing, you fat piece of shit! Okay, sorry. Oh my God. Dude, I feel sorry for teachers. I literally feel sorry for teachers now because you can't do, how many people did I lose? Like people left because I was on a phone call. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Am I plugged in? Um, yeah, you can't draw, kids can't draw guns in school. They're not allowed. I have not. My nine-year-old, I mean, he's nine, for God's sake. He doesn't even know about school shootings. Like, I have never even told him about school shootings because I'm trying not to terrify him. You know, he's nine. Uh, so he doesn't understand why he can draw them at home, but not at school. And so he just, you know, the teacher told him, you can't draw this at school. And she's just was trying to tell me that he didn't take it very well. So I'm going to have to come up with a way to explain it to him. But this new reality we live in is really, is really awful. I feel sorry for the teachers. I feel sorry for the kids. I, this, the whole thing is terrible and it's not the school's fault. I get why they don't want that nowadays. Ugh. Anyway, it's fine. He's not in any trouble, really. He's just, he has, he has to, he has like a, a lunch detention, <laughs> but he's really upset about it. Uh, oh, well, okay. Could he draw Trump though? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm going to tell him not to try it though. No, he goes to a Catholic school, so it'll pro it would probably be okay. <laughs> Although I'm not really sure. Yeah, kids can't be kids, and it's just, it's too bad. And this, and the really sad thing about it was like he was, he was making up a schedule of playing Fortnite time with his dad, because that's something he does with his dad. They play together. And so he was actually drawing in his little journal, and it was free time. He was drawing in his little journal all the things he was going to do when he got home this weekend. So he was drawing this cool new Fortnite gun that's coming out for 2024 and that he's going to get it with his dad and they're going to play together. 
so it was really sweet and innocent. It wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like a, uh, you know, a cry for help or anything. Just, but it's so hard to explain to little, little innocent children, the kind of world that we live in. So anyway, I'm sorry. I'm a mom. I told you sometimes I have to take phone calls about school and kids and you guys who are saying things are blurry. I don't think it's on my end. Can you refresh your screen? I don't know. Maybe you have your setting on YouTube on a lower, uh, what's the word on the settings button. You can choose the I don't know the word, you guys. I need IT Goatee Brad to explain it to me. Okay, we got to move. This is, we got to get, I've got like a half an hour. Okay. The 214 and 228 orders impermissibly refute allegations in the disqualification motion, motions. Despite the judge's bare contentions in both orders that he was not passing judgment on the truth of the facts alleged, he did so. In fact, it's rather troubling that Judge DeThomas confidently states that neither his five-page single-space novella orders, I, I added the novella, of 214 nor his three-page single-spaced order of 228 passed on or took issue with any facts. The record already reflects these orders passed on at least some facts directly. For example, oh good, Brad's here. Brad, would you please explain to the people in the chat who are having a fuzzy screen that their settings are wrong? Would you tell them what setting to change it to on YouTube? Because you know me, I can't remember what the setting is. For example, in paragraph 9 of the 214 order, Judge DeThomas has wrote, any objective review of the proceedings held on 123.24 would not cause a reasonably prudent person to fear not receiving a fair trial. Hmm. First, this comment is in direct rebuttal to a Hale's statement in his motions regarding his fear of not receiving a fair trial and thus is improper commentary by the trial court. The judge's declaration, moreover, is not reality based, certainly not after one views the video <laughs> recording of the proceeding. Nope. As the defendant in this case, Hales, had a very different perspective than that of the judge. Hales had a front row seat at council table on J January 23rd and experienced firsthand the intolerable adversarial atmosphere between his side of the case and Judge DeThomas's. Yeah, and his lawyers. The remainder of paragraph nine then attempts to justify the court's hostile conduct towards Hale's attorneys with vague accusations of their unacceptable behavior contrary to law. Get the fucking chainsaws ready! Another obvious example of the judge impermissibly taking issue with allegations in a disqualification motion is in paragraph 9A of the order. There, the judge directly addresses and refutes paragraphs 11 and 12 of Hale's second disqualification motion, stating his averments are illogical, irrelevant, and inconsequential. Although it appears the judge misunderstood the nature of an argument advanced in the alternative as being the same as two arguments involving competing hypotheses. Oh, he's really not going to like this. He nonetheless should have refrained from offering any comment at all, considering he was drafting an order denying a motion to disqualify. Judge DeThomas's impermissible rebuttal of factual allegations contained in Hales's motions was not cured by a threadbare qualifier that he was not passing judgment on the truth of the facts alleged contained in the motion. ID at 524. The order, with its repeated accusations of ethical misconduct on the part of Hales's attorney, exacerbates the intolerable adversary atmosphere between the trial judge and the litigant that the disqualification rule was designed to prevent. Department of Revenue v. Golder. In conformity with the legal authority already cited herein, the five-page single-spaced order denying Hales a second disqualification motion is an independent basis to disqualify Judge DeThomas's. The actual content, language, and tone of the order further provide additional bases to disqualify this judge as set forth below and further establish that Hales' fear of not receiving a fair trial before this judge is indeed well-founded. Number two, Judge DeThomas' running polemic on counsel's unacceptable behaviors and actions contrary to law puts the veiled threats to report, plus the veiled threats to report counsel to the Florida Bar, 
are objectively reasonable basis, base, bases for Hales to fear he will not receive a fair trial with this judge. To be sure, is basis the right word? Reasonable base, isn't it B-A-S-I-S? -S? It's okay. Doreen was up really late. But is basis, I'm, I'm wondering if you can use the word basis as well, like a foundation. And I don't know. I think it might be a typo. It's all right, Doreen, we forgive you. You're, <laughs> if it is a typo, you were up very late. To be sure, a judge who questions the veracity or ethics of a party or counsel may be subject to disqualification depending on the unique facts of the case. Oh, yeah, it could be plural. Right, MG Law. It's plural of, yep, it's the plural. That's what it is. That's why it threw me for a minute. Because English is such a hard language. God, English is so nuts. Because there are so many different applications of the same damn word. Right? And how often do you see the plural form of the word basis with the I? Very rarely. So it's not a typo. I'm just medium smart. There you go. <laughs> Dor look at Doreen schooling me in English today. English hates us all. <laughs> Klein v. JRD Management Company. Uh, in his 214 order, Judge de Thomas states four different times that he admonished counsel. <gasps> no, is that true? Oh, Brad, I didn't see it. No, I didn't. Why didn't anybody text me? Why didn't you text me? Did anybody text me about this? So apparently there's news on the deposition. Did she show up? Did she show up? We're talking about the Tonsil Twins case. Her deposit, Laura Owen's deposition was today. And we think, I thought she showed up because I didn't hear any news. And I would think I would have heard. Oh, it's on his Patreon? Oh, well, if it's on Patreon, then I can't then I can't tell anyone until after he goes public with it. All right. Anyway, moving on. I'll check it after. Justice Thomas has states four different times that he admonished counsel at the hearing on 123 for certain perceived transgressions going back on to November 29th. Before Shockett was involved in the case, Shockett was only the was the only attorney who appeared with Hales in court on 123-24 and not responsible for the court's consternation last November. That's funny. Nonetheless, Judge de Thomas has punished Shockett for feathers purported offenses as well as those that the judge believed belonged exclusively to Shockett. The video record of the January 23rd hearing reveals what those admonishments really look like. Par portions of paragraphs eight and nine of Judge de Thomas's order. You know, instead of rereading his order, I say we go back over to my video and just watch the feather compilation because it's funny. Let's just watch the judge lose his shit over Mark Feather. Mark Feather! <laughs> I'm starting to wonder where Mark was, Mark Feather was, the day the Titanic went down. I think we should find out. I think we should find out. There's a distinct possibility that it was his fault. Just saying. All right, I'm trying to open this up now. Share screen, hold please while I get my shit together. Right, the feather stuff should be coming up. Okay, it's like right here. Yeah, he's like Your co counsel, Mark. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Judge, I only need about 15 more minutes to conclude the entirety of my case. I found that to be incredulous understatement of the morning. 
I don't know of a lawyer who could have because he said he needed to present two additional witnesses. He needed to cross-examine the petitioner, who at that time took about two hours to not even get through with her direct testimony. And he didn't even address whether he was going to call his client and or maybe forgot whether he was going to make legal arguments to the court. There was no way anyone, after this judge has spent 40 years almost on a daily basis in a courtroom, could have done that in 15 minutes. But in that context, Oh, here he goes. Current counsel, co counsel Mr. Feather, Mr. Shockey, <laughs> took the case and said he couldn't be ready. Start calling co counsel. And this the flying arm motions, but there it is. Everything's 15 minutes. He's, yeah, he's like, Your yeah. co counsel, Mark Feather, said 15 minutes. And Mr. Feather represented no objection to that date. Mr. Shockett, who was co-counsel to Mr. Feather, Mr. Feather represented he could be Tell about Feather. 15 minutes. He's so pissed about that 15 minutes. In hindsight, in error, this court regretfully allowed the deposition of Mr. Ms. Preston to take place in the first place. You we regret due process. The on November 29, when the respondent was represented by counsel Mark Feather, Mark Feather went off with an opportunity to reconvene the following morning at 9 a.m. And I'll get into that. I've got a pinched nerve in my neck and I'm starting to understand that maybe it's Mark Feather's fault because this judge, man, he'll blame this guy for everything. He's got a hangnail. It's Mark Feather. You're <laughs> it's not my fault this morning. Mark Feather. <laughs> Mark Feather. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Mark Feather's fault. <laughs> <laughs> when Judge Thomas says cusses around his buddies, you know, like Joshua Silverman, he's like, oh, Mark Feather, you know, <laughs> don't Mark Feather yourself. He's <laughs> MF. His MF is Mark Feather. <laughs> you MF, Mark you, Feather. Mark Featherer. You're such a Mark Featherer. <laughs> Why do you have to be Mark Feather and everything up? <laughs> so good. Just had it. He has feathering had it with Mark Feather. <laughs> Who the feather do you think you are? So, Mr. Shockett, Get the feather out of my courtroom. Redepose an individual who needs their burden in here. Trial, There's so many feathers. <laughs> who your co counsel only needed 15 minutes to call two witnesses, possibly. So the 15 the minutes trial. again. Mark, 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 the chat. By so the funny. Way, Mark Feather invited me to go fishing with him today. And I didn't so that I could be here with you guys. Oh, that's awfully nice. I really wanted to go hang out and go fishing with him. Uh, you know, a it's a good thing you didn't, though, because had you gone fishing with Mark Feather at your next hearing, to Thomas's would have been, I heard, heard that the respondent went fishing with Mark Feather. <laughs> 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 contempt, contempt. Just to say those exact time stamps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now you got the idea that Mark Feather was a very important piece of that hearing. He came up a lot. And I actually didn't even get all of the references. I just did as much as I could. Um, but there were there were more. Believe me, there were more. Oh, my God. He's obsessed with Mark Feather. I can't wait to interview Mark Feather. I wonder if Mark Feather will come on this program. Mark, you're welcome to come on this program. You have triggered this judge harder than anyone has ever been triggered before. And it's funny as fuck. And I want to have you on this channel because it's funny. All right. Judge Thomas has indicates above that after his criticisms. Oh, do you? I got Larry. That is so sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the hundred dollar super chat. Congrats on 40. Did I hit 40,000? <gasps> Wow. Also, kids should be permitted to draw guns in school so long as they do so in a peaceful manner. Kids deserve the right to First Amendment as well. I'm tired of this PCBS. I know. I know. I know. It is a difficult, difficult thing because what am I, what am I going to do? I'm going to be like the parent who's like, I think my kids should be able to draw a gun in school because I do. But yeah, we're very few and far between, you know. Like everyone's terrified. And I get it. I get it. Thank you so much, Larry. Very generous of you. I appreciate that. It's an interesting conversation. Maybe we should talk about that sometime, you know? Because uh I think I think the argument is the argument 
for not allowing it is probably that children do not have the same first, they don't have the same constitutional rights as, as most, as, as adults. They actually don't legally. This is actually an argument. I'm, uh, this is actually a legal dilemma that I talk about a lot because of, you know, child protective services and all the work I do with family court and stuff. Children actually don't have the same rights as we do under the law, which I think is a real problem. And in school, they can really curtail their rights because I don't actually know what their reasoning is, but they do it. And you have to really fight for their rights in, in school. Uh, we, Larry, you and I should talk about that sometime because I've gotten into some fights at school about my children's constitutional rights. And in fact, their right to have a lawyer. I wrote this really interesting article one time about how you should get your kids a lawyer before you send them into school. Because I send my kids with a lawyer. I send them with a letter from their lawyer that says if any agent of the state should come to question them for anything about any, you know, for any reason that you're to contact their lawyer first, not me, because if like child protective services comes, they won't contact the parent. They'll, you know, but they have to contact a lawyer if there's one on record. So that was actually a really good way around these people is to have your kids have a lawyer. But I should fight the detention. Oh, I don't know. I, the thing about fighting the detention is that they do it to other kids and other kids have had to have the same detention for doing the same thing. And if the other parents aren't fighting it, I can't just fight it for my kid. Can I? I don't know. I hate being that mom at school. I mean, I do it when I absolutely have to, but I try to let the little things go. I don't know. It is a conversation that maybe I should have with Larry, uh, because I, I guess I see it as more of a, it's just one of those things that sucks that we have to get through, but I don't know how to explain it to him in a rational way. Anyway, moving on. I, I got to get through this. Okay. Judge Thomas says indicates above that after his critis criticisms are placed on the record as done at each prior hearing, the court's responsibility is to allow response of counsel, if any. Although there is quite a bit of evidence in this record of the court questioning counsel, including excer excerpted in the following section. There does not seem to be much record, if any, of counsel responding to the court and being allowed to do so. Yeah, right? Because he's never allowed to respond. Judge DeThomas has, for example, accused Mark Feather of... Wait, I forgot. At Mark Feather's button. Mark Feather! Get the Fucking chainsaw is ready. Of, of three transgressions. One, the misrepresentation on 1129 about Hales having to go to Ohio. Two, violations of administrative orders regarding unredacted versus redacted recordings obtained. Three, Feather stated he could be done with the case in 15 minutes at the end of the day in 1129. Mark Feather, however, did not appear in court after November 29, 2023. And he formally withdrew from the case on or about 2-23-24. The only order to show cause Feather received came from Chief Judge Mosley. And Feather was called to answer the, to the Chief Judge, which he did, and the matter should be resolved. The point is, there does not seem to be any evidence in this record that Judge DeThomasis followed his own order and requested or sought a response directly from Feather before the judge metaphorically tarred and feathered him. <laughs> before the judge metaphorically tarred and feathered him. Oh my God, that's great. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm dying. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> tarred and feathered him without giving him an opportunity to be heard and then repeatedly condemned him feather in absentia at each and every subsequent hearing. Yeah, when he wasn't even there to defend himself. What kind of a horse shit is that? Due process requires that a judge possess neither actual nor perceived bias. A judge's fundamental responsibility is to protect the constitutional rights of others. A judge's callous disregard for the constitutional rights of the people who appear before him is the antithesis of his judicial obligations. Because you are a corrupt person. You're the most corrupt. Inquiry concerning a judge. Uh, 
Judge to Thomas's abuse language, obtuse, sorry, obtuse language, but abuse language would fit too. Obtuse language and veiled threats suggestive of reports being made to the Florida bar for the attorneys to be called upon to account for their behaviors to answer or explain their behaviors and to be admonished at the other end of Judge DeThomas's due process spectrum is paragraph nine of the order. And this is just more of Judge DeThomas's uh, whining. Uh, about violating the rules. They're violating rules all over the place. Basically, what he's saying is... Get the fucking chainsaws ready! <laughs> right. And uh, the other end of the spectrum for Hales and for the attorneys, the judge's words on his 214 order, who is now necessarily concerned that each foray into Judge de Thomas's courtroom will involve 15 minutes of preliminary attorney inquisition on collateral matters, not to mention at his expense, before the merits of his case are addressed. That's right. When he goes into the when he goes into the uh, courtroom, this is literally what the judge does as soon as they walk in, as soon as court's in session. You, you will pay for what you've done, and I pray that God send angels to visit vengeance upon you. <laughs> Indeed, the record already reflects his intention to indulge in this exercise regarding a sequestration issue, which the judge appears to be applying in an overly broad fashion to Hales and his witnesses, who have not yet begun testifying, nor were even sworn. Specifically, Judge de Thomas has stated that when the parties return for trial on March 1st, the court will start with conducting inquiry as to who spoke to who. Remember this part that we read? This was so crazy. And will issue sanctions, including the exclusion of testimony. He's already excluding testimony before he knows the facts. Unbelievable. In light of the demonstrable history of this judge's disparate treatment of the parties, including selective interpretation and application of administrative and procedural rules as between the parties in this case and his hostility and express condemnation of Hales' counsel, Hales' fear of not receiving a fair trial is both well-founded and reasonable. The doctrine of judicial independence does not afford judges the power to do as they please. Judge Thomas's professed justification in his order that it is the court's responsibility to assure the orderly administration of justice does not justify retaliatory conduct against the attorneys or the parties, nor does alleged misconduct or the good motives of a judge excuse departure from the guidelines established in the Code of Judicial Conduct. As the Florida Supreme Court stated, in Erickson, Supra, Judge Erickson essentially believes that if a judge believes a defendant who exercises a legal right is attempting to interfere with the orderly administration of justice, the judge has the right to react to the defendant by inflicting punishment upon him or her. However, if even if a defendant knows that the exercise of a legal right may interfere with the orderly administration of justice, a judge cannot punish the defendant solely for exercising that legal right. To approve that approach would have a chilling effect on the defendants who legitimately seek to exercise their legal rights and is contrary to the fundamental principles of due process. That's right. You have a fundamental right to speak publicly about what is being done to you in a government courtroom by a government judge. He is a thug judge. He is a jackbooted thug judge with his boot on the neck of Jeremy Hales. And Jeremy Hales has a right to raise holy hell about it, however he wants to. On YouTube, in the newspaper, he could take out a full page in the New York Times, and the judge can't do jack shit about it. It, it really, this is makes me angry. Number three, a judge to Thomas says is a... A, Judge to Thomas's hostility and, 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 and animosity towards Hale's counsel is a basis for his disqualification. References to the record are taken from the official redacted video recording of January 23rd hearing. The bracketed timestamps next to quoted excerpts of the proceeding are as close as possible to the time increment on the recording. The judge's bias against feather! Get the fucking chainsaw! Ready. Paragraph 7A through C of the order addresses court hearings that occurred early on in the case of November 29th. 
and December 6th. Attorney Feather represented Hales at November 29th proceeding. Attorney Shockett of Shockett Law Group entered an appearance shortly before December 6th hearing. What Judge Thomas has apparently perceived as egregious misconduct during and surrounding these early hearings quickly became a running polemic that continues to this day and is being used to justify denial of due process to Hales. Paragraph 7 references a statement made by Attorney Feather to the court. Uh, Footnote two says the transcript proceeding is not yet ready and the supplemental of the record to include it will be requested. Okay. Uh, attorney Feather. So a statement made by Attorney Feather to the court at the end of the day on November 29th regarding the possibility of concluding the hearing that had not finished the next morning at 9 a.m. Mr. Feather's words were, no, Your Honor, Mr. Hales is having to address matters in Ohio court related to this situation. He has to be there tomorrow morning. The court thus scheduled the conc conclusion of the hearing for December 6th. From Feather's statement, the judge assumed that Hales had to be present at a court proceeding the next morning in Ohio court, rather than consider the possibility that Feather simply misspoke or failed to phrase his response more articulately. The judge immediately reached the adverse conclusion that Feather intentionally displayed a lack of candor with this tribunal and obtained a longer continuance for his client based on misrepresentation. Ironically, on the electronic recording of the January 23rd hearing, the court, speaking rapidly, stated, anyone after this judge has spent 40 years almost on a daily basis in a courtroom. Although that statement gives the impression that Judge DeThomasis has been serving as a judge on the bench for 40 years, we know that not to be the case. Immediately assuming that the judge lied in making that statement when he merely did not articulate his words carefully would be absurd, of course. Nonetheless, in his order, Judge DeThomasis continues to impugn Feather with his this statement months later after having reached a negative conclusion without ever affording Feather an opportunity to be heard. Such conduct is the antithesis of impartiality. It is apparent that the court's bias against Feather manifested itself at that point early on when the judge assumed, without more, that Feather lied to the court. It quickly intensified when the court also learned soon after that Feather requested and obtained unredacted versions of video recordings of 1129 and 126 hearings, which he provided to Hales, who broadcast them in conjunction with his YouTube program, What the Hales. Once bias became manifest, confirmation bias followed. Confirmation bias is the well-documented tendency once one has made up one's mind to search harder for evidence that confirms rather than contradicts one's initial judgment. Florida Supreme Court Administrative Order, which was des designed to further standardize court operations and minimize unnecessary workload for the trial courts while continuing to protect from inappropriate release any confidential information that may be captured on electronic recordings and local administrative order of the 8th Judicial Circuit contains procedures for obtaining copies of electronically recorded court proceedings. Section 5, oh, this should be good, entitled Safeguarding Confidential Communications when Electronic Recording Equipment is Used. In the courtroom states, pursuant to Florida Supreme Court administrative order, as amended, before any CD is released to a non-party in a case, it shall be redacted of any confidential material found therein. Provides that copies of audio video recordings may be made available to attorneys of record, parties to a case, and self-represented litigants upon request, so long as acknowledgement is provided with a copy that states that confidential information may be contained on the recording. Further dissemination of confidential information contained on the recording is prohibited, and violation of the prohibition against dissemination may subject the requester to an action for contempt of court. As Attorney Feather signed the required acknowledgement when he requested the two unredacted recordings and unwittingly furnished them to Hales, who published them on his YouTube program, Feather received an order to show cause issued by Chief Judge Mosley on January 17th, requiring him to appear before the Chief Judge and show cause why he should not be held in contempt for purportedly violating the Supreme Court and local administrative rules as to the unredacted recordings. Feather appeared with counsel before the Chief Judge on February 7th and received a sanction commensurate with the offense, the monetary portion of which was vacated sua sponte. This administrative matter involving Feather was collateral to the instant court proceeding, but Judge DeThomasis made it a centerpiece. That the chief judge of the Eighth Judicial Circuit took charge of Feather's matter and not Judge DeThomasis indicates that keeping the matter separate was intentional and important so to, as to avoid even the appearance of prejudice to Hales arising from his own attorney being sanctioned by the judge deciding the merits of Hales' case. 
That objective was not and could not be accomplished because as shown by Judge Thomas' comments and demeanor in the video recording of the January 23 proceeding, he could not keep his antipathy toward Feather from impacting his judgment on substantive issues in Hale's case. Confirmation bias extends to Attorney Shockett at the January 23rd hearing. In paragraph 7C of the February 14th order denying Hale's second disqualification motion, Judge DeThomasis makes it appear that he was the trier of fact over Mark Feather's administrative contempt matter, made adverse findings against Feather, and admonished Feather accordingly, stating all of this that we already read. So we'll just skip it because we already read that part of his thing yesterday or the day before or whatever. Oh, I like uh, footnote number three, though, at this bold part that he did disseminate an unredacted copy. Look at the look at the footnote. Bolding here done by Judge DeThomasis, unless indicated that emphasis was added by the judge, all emphasis added with bold, underlined or italicized font were done by this writer. Um, paragraph 7B, Reef Feather's perceived misrepresentation to the court states, and again, we've read this a lot. Mark Feather, however, did not appear at the January 23rd hearing, nor any hearings after November 29th. Only Attorney Shock had appeared in court from December 6th forward. As shown by his own order, however, Judge DeThomasis berated Shockett at the January 23rd hearing for perceived transgressions allegedly committed by Feather. Although Shockett was not even involved in the case at the time of 1129 hearing, and although he was merely the messenger at the 126 hearing, the face of the order shows that Judge DeThomasis's bias became directed at Shockett, whom the judge undeservedly yet repeatedly admonished at the January 23rd hearing for alleged offenses Shockett didn't commit, nor could have committed. Moreover, as to Mark Feather's administrative matter involving the in-court video recordings, not only did Judge DeThomasis admonish Shockett on January 23rd without any cause, but he did so without proper authority because the chief judge had already assumed responsibility over that collateral matter. Despite Mark Feather's physical absence at the January 23rd hearing, he was certainly present in spirit. Mark Feather! And clearly at the forefront forefront of things considered by the judge. And she, they're quoting all this stuff about Mark Feather, Mark Feather, Mark Feather, Mr. Feather, Mr. Feather, Mark Feather, misrepresentations, Mr. Feather, misrepresented, misrepresentation, Mr. Feather, misrepresentations, November 29, November 30, co-counsel to this day, Mr. Feather, your co-counsel in violation, your co-counsel, Mr. Feather. It is abundantly clear from the judge's own comments that he was troubled by things allegedly done by Mark Feather starting on November 29th, and that as of January 23rd, he remains troubled. Having repeatedly castigated Feather in a litany of derogatory references to him in a manner disguised as to totality of the circumstances, the judge directed that hostility toward Shockett. For example, in discussing the many challenges that Shockett faced when taking the deposition of Preston, who was pro se at the time, the judge launched into a cross-examination of Shockett as further evidenced by his tone, body language, raised voice, and inappropriately aggressive demeanor. So you're giving her advice? Do you agree that the depot that was taken by video as opposed to just audio was proper or improper? We need Larry here for his uh, dramatic reading. Um, you have to answer that. Did you tell me? Tell me, have you done anything? And has it been successful? Would you agree they've been unsuccessful until today? Blah, 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 blah. Judge DeThomasis' interrogation of Shockett was that of a zealous advocate. Given that the judge had not treated Attorney Shockett in such a manner at prior hearings, coupled with the fact that the judge had already recited Mark Feather's perceived transgressions multiple times at this point, it would certainly appear that the judge's extreme bias against Feather had now transferred onto Shockett. <laughs> five, I give it five blahs, Sarah, five blahs. Mm-hmm. A trial judge's conduct crosses the line of ostensible neutrality and impartiality when he becomes overly involved. Uh, hang on a second. Overly involved. I'm trying to pull up my locals chat. In a hearing. 
Excessive participation. I love that phrase because that really describes what he is do what he's been doing. Excessive participation by the trial judge may amount to usurping the functions of counsel, litigating from the bench, yeah, and be an abuse of the discretion and latitude of the court in such respects, with resultant injury to the rights of a party or pol or parties. A trial judge's failure to remain neutral during a proceeding is also a due process violation that requires reversal. Judge De Thomas's adversarial conduct toward attorney Shockett has created and exacerbated Hale's fear of not receiving a fair trial by this judge. Judge De Thomas's comments were not merely expressions of dissatisfaction, but a running diatribe of the facetious ridicule and resentment, which almost always finds its way back to Mark Feather. Mark Feather. Everyone say it together. Mark Feather. Get the fucking chainsaws ready. And nonetheless, we have concurrent counsel in a case who files a motion to continue 24 hours and 20 minutes before a case he knew he couldn't be prepared for. Blah, 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 blah. Feather, feather, feather. Feather, feather, violations, feather. No less than 13 times during this 90-minute hearing, Judge DeThomas has brought up the same three issues he had with, an attor with attorney Feather. Uh, from back in November, December 2023. That means, on average, oh my God, this is so good. On average, of approximately once every seven minutes, Judge DeThomas has resurrected Mark Feather by name or by reference and then condemned him for either his pur purported misrepresentations or his violations of the administrative orders of the Florida Supreme Court and the chief judge. <laughs> every, once every seven minutes, once every seven minutes, this man mentioned Mark Feather. Good math, Doreen. <laughs> Good for you for using math <laughs> to take down this judge. Yeah, I know DUI guy is live right now. I'm going to be sending you all over there as soon as I get done with this, and I'm going to be done soon. Importantly, Hales was present to witness the judge's repeated verbal assaults on one of his attorneys who wasn't even present. His fear of not receiving a fair trial before Judge DeThomas's in light of his obvious bias against Mark Feather was objectively reasonable. Immediately following most of these demeaning references came the judge's criticism of Shockett, in which he referred to Shockett as Feather's co-counsel when addressing him before the judge, then impugned Shockett himself for having asked for a continuance on December 6th. Those remarks at once suggest that the judge deems Shockett guilty by association of some inchoate transgressions. Inchoate? How do you say that? Inchoate? In, 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 I don't know. To be determined by this judge because of attorney feather and treatment strongly suggests the judge's antipathy and indeed his bias has extended to Shockett. As shown by the video of his record, Judge Thomas's hostility toward counsel was not just evident in his words, but in his entire being. I pointed this out with the waving of the arms. His indignant and sometimes sarcastic tone and voice inflections, his body language, even his finger pointing, either at shock it or audibly down onto his papers, punching the desk. To punctuate what he was saying, a judge should disqualify him, himself or herself in instances where the judge has a personal bias or prejudice concerning a party or a party's lawyer. Granting writ of prohibition where alleged characterization of Murphy's counsel as engaged in ploys and having a history of filing late motions and blaming court staff by itself could have rendered Murphy's fear of bias a reasonable one. Judge to Thomas's attack on the memorandum of law. Wait, is this really 49 pages? Hold on. What page are we on? 36. Aren't there exhibits to this thing? I was hoping that the end pages were all exhibits. No, it's really 49 pages. Oh, I was on 36. Whew. I may have to just kill it. You may all have to go over and watch Larry. I think that's what you'll have to do. I don't have time to finish reading this because we are there's too many pages. But they've all been really good so far. Really, really good. So let me go and set up the redirect. You guys go over to Larry. I actually don't know if this is what he's reading. Um, he he's reading something. But let me let me let me send you over there. And thank you so much for being here today. Don't forget, subscribe to Fox Den Daily on all the podcast platforms so that uh, you can keep up with everything that's going on in the law tube world. It's my 25 minute recap that I do every day that I have to go and record right now. 
Uh, and I will see you guys on the flip flop, probably. Take care. And don't forget, thanks for the 40,000 subs, by the way. And oh, no, I can't leave you yet. There are super chats to get to. Those of you who want to go, who want to go and listen to Larry right now, you can pop on over there. But I've got super chats that I need to read. So let's do that. To re you know, I need some music. Should we do jazz today? There we go. Teresa Minnesota, thanks for the super chat. The ladies of and associated with LawTube rock. Well, thank you. Linda Evers, respect for you and Larry and Tug. Sorry, I don't care for popcorn guy. Puzzled Puzzler, thanks for the super chat, says, I like cute and fuzzy dog butts. I cannot lie. Cute and fuzzy dog butts. I mean, who doesn't, really? Betsy Ross, welcome to the Fox Den. Uh, Judge to dumbass, says Claire Kershaw. Thanks for the super chat. And Lisa Jewett says, I think you're great, Megan. Free speech zone. Yep, yep, that's what we do here. Thanks for the super chat. Puzzled Puzzler, thanks for the super chat, says, can he draw a feather? David Bro, thanks for the super chat, says, wow, I just signed in and had no idea you were a musician as well. Very catchy tunes. So, oh, by the way, I'm new, sent by way of what the hails. Well, thank you to Jeremy and George for sending you here. Paige Woodward, thanks for the super chat, says, this judge should display a warning label in plain sight. Caution, deep doo-doo within 500 feet. Uh, Alan Budlow says, with my big red nose, can I get a job in the clown court? I don't know. They might like that over there. Lisa Pridmore, thanks for the super chat, says, is De Thomas's stalking Feather? It kind of sounds like it. Maybe Feather needs his own protective order. Angela Edwards, thanks for the super chat, says, Larry, you're all rock stars. So happy the What the Hales are getting help. Yeah, me too. Teresa Minnesota, thanks for the super chat. If Feather equals the F word, does that mean shock it equals the S word? If you, you pile of shock it? Oh my God, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Jessica Kruger, at least go have lunch with him. Thank you for the super chat. Chi-Town Legal, thanks for the super chat, says, I started typing to Thomasis and the word devil came up instead. Nuff said, congrats, Megan. Thank you. And Chi-Town Legal, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate that. And Sarah Adams says, I'm writing with a feather and ink. Thank you for the super chat. Rich Atwood says, congrats on 40K. That is really amazing, you guys. My, um, my audience here has almost doubled in a month. Really, it's incredible. You guys, I hope you really like it here and I hope you do stay. I hope you don't rage quit on me. Um, so until next time, you guys take care and uh, be good to one another. Let's make Americans friends again. That's That would be the best thing that could happen after this. Let's go after the people who really deserve it. <laughs> the people in government who are pissing everybody off by taking away rights. Those are the people who deserve our um, ire and our energy. Don't take it out on your uncle at, at the Thanksgiving table. <laughs> let's let's not do that. Let's just be friends again. And remember that we can all uh, have a beer together, no matter who we vote for. All right, guys. See ya. I was lost. My world is near its end. I almost felt my head is full of a million choices. I am alive. I'm not here to pretend.
alive, I'm not here to pretend I love my friends, my heart is filled with million voices Oh, this road has many choices In my heart, million voices Come next to me, my friend, embrace the sky I'm not afraid to fly, it's not the time to say goodbye